Hi, I'm Steve Rossetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the Movie Picks Guides to Sony Movie Studio or Vegas and the Movie Picks Guides to DVD Architect Studio. And here we are in a movie studio project. One of the most common questions we get is how to handle situations when there's material you don't want to appear in your video. Now this material can be in the form of a logo that you don't want someone to see, or it can be some offensive material, or it can be in the case of simply somebody who doesn't want to be in your video. He didn't sign a release, you don't have permission to use him, and we need to blur him out. We've seen this on, of course, TV shows like Cops, right? We blur people's faces, we don't want to show certain people in our movie, and that's the situation I have here. We shot this out on the street, and this little gentleman here off to the right, or off to my right, that's actually me in the white shirt, off to my right, does not want to be in my video. So we have to figure out how to blur his face. It's a very simple process. And we're going to do this by using two tricks. One is that we're going to use an effect to blur the video. And then we are going to use something called the cookie cutter to use only a portion of that blurred video. And then we're going to overlay the blurred video onto a clear version of the video. First thing I'm going to need is a second copy of this same scene. And to do that, I'm just going to go up here to my project media panel. I'll right click on the clip in my media panel and drag it down to my timeline and let go. Now the reason why I right clicked is because then I have the option of getting the video only. And I'll select that and there it is. Now we have a duplicate clip. We have the same clip on our video track 2 and our video track 3. Now I'm going to take my special effect, my blurring effect, and I'm going to apply it to the video on track 2. So to do that we'll go to our video effects and the effect I want to apply is the pixelate effect. And the pixelate effect is going to kind of create, as you can see, a pixelation or a mosaic. Let's use large. I'll drag it down onto the clip. We can always make adjustments later. When we do, we get our uh, video event control panel. Hold down the control key as you move it around. And so we want to say, is that blurred enough? And of course, we have the option of blurring it a little more if we'd like, or pixelating it. And that looks like a pretty good pixelation. That's going to render the person in the yellow shirt there pretty much unrecognizable. So we'll close the box there. Now what we want to do is apply a cookie cutter. And a cookie cutter is up here in our effects. What the cookie cutter is basically going to do is, as you can see in the little thumbnail image, is it's going to use a portion of our video. There it is, a little circle, and then all around it is going to be transparent. So in other words, when I apply the cookie cutter to our video on video two, only the things inside this little circle in the center here are going to be pixelated. What we're going to see around it is the clear video. We'll drag it down onto the clip. There it is. And I'm just going to just size the box just a little bit so we don't get in the way. Now you can see that where our cookie cutter is now is in the center of the frame. So I'm being blurred out instead of the person I want to blur. And so just to simplify things, I'm going to go to the clip here on video track one. And I'm going to drag down the opacity, right? That's 100%. And I'm going to drag it down to zero. And the reason why is I'm going to temporarily disable the video on video one. So that I can concentrate only on this little cookie cutter circle here in the center. Center. Now that circle's pretty big, so the first thing I want to do is I want to shrink that circle down a little bit. And I can do that by using the slider, or I can more precisely, uh, I can actually type in the numbers here. I'm going to set it to about 0.1. And then I want to change its position, and I can do that by unlocking center here. This is the simplest way to do it, and dragging that little bullseye where I want it. Now what I want it is over this guy's face. What's the problem? Well, this guy moves around and the camera angle moves around also. So what I want to do is make sure that it's always over his face no matter where he moves to in the frame. And I'm going to do that by moving the playhead around. I'm going to hold down Control and Alt here so that we don't hear any sound. And sometimes he's right in the center of that cookie cutter. Sometimes he's outside of it a little bit. So we want to create an animation so that cookie cutter follows him around. To do that, I need to turn on my animation right here by clicking on the little watch icon to the right of the, in this particular case, the center attribute. And when I do that, I get a timeline down here at the bottom where I can arrange the location. And I don't know, does that actually go off the screen here? Move this up a little bit. There we go. We've got a timeline down here at the bottom where I can create an animation for where this circle appears. So I'm going to, I guess, have to move this off to the side here for now because I need to be able to get to the playhead to the beginning of my clip. Now, I don't think my character actually appears 
in the clip at this point. There he is, he's way off to the side here. So we'll follow him. Now in order for me to create my animation, I wanna make sure that the playhead right here on my keyframe controller is in sync with the playhead on my main timeline. To do that, I'm just gonna click on this little lock here. Now both of them are in sync, and when I move one, the other moves. And then what I need to do is just follow this guy around. Now sometimes he goes out of frame, so I'm not gonna to worry too much about that. But let's look, there he is back in frame. So let's just keep it where it is right now. And we're gonna look for any place where he moves out of frame. I think we can use an adjustment there. And notice when I make an adjustment that the keyframe controller automatically creates new keyframes for that location. We'll move our playhead a little farther down. He moves out of frame again, so we'll make another adjustment. Move the playhead a little farther down. We could probably use another adjustment there a little farther, and we'll make one final adjustment. And each time we did, the keyframe controller, you'll notice, added new keyframes. So when I play through this, or when I scrub through it by dragging on the playhead, you should be able to see that little cookie cutter, that little circle, follow the man around the screen. So let's see how well it looks. I'm just gonna scrub through it, drag the playhead. That's nice. It's following him around, right? Now that we have that, I'm going to drag the opacity back up to 100% on the clip on Video Track 3. And we'll go ahead and close our Video Event Effects box. And now, when I play through, we should see, I'm just gonna scrub through here by dragging the playhead, that little pixelation should stay over that man's face the whole way through the clip. Success, we've successfully blurred a person or an object. Even though he was moving throughout the video frame, we've successfully created a pixelation over him throughout the entire clip. Now, if you'd like to know more about this great program and all the great tools in it, be sure to check out the many tips and tutorials we have here at moviepix.com. And of course, if you wanna know everything about all the tools in the program and how to do great little tricks like this, be sure to check out our books, the moviepix.com guide to Movie Studio Platinum, as well as the moviepix.com guide to DVD Architect Studio, available at amazon.com and of course, right here at the Movie Pix store. I'm Steve Grisetti. Thanks for for joining me. See you again real soon.